ecosystem-based ba adaptation strategies in the Meghna Basin, including uh, gaps in our understanding, as well as understanding of the transboundary linkages of these impacts uh, over both sides of our political boundaries of these two countries, India and Bangladesh. Uh, we will also discuss about the role of nature-based solutions uh, and 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 how it why and how it is important in building community resilience to climate change. With these uh, opening remarks, uh, I would now request the first speaker of the session who will provide us an overview uh, of the Meghna Basin, especially in the context of climate change. I request uh, Shamsher Ali to provide his. Uh, 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 input into uh, as a first speaker, but before that, let me also give briefly introduce him. Samsar Ali is an activist, a researcher, and a writer. Uh, he works on the four R's, what he call the four R's, uh, which means right to river and rights of the river. Besides rivers, he has been working on issues like governance of natural resources and ecological justice issues since the year 2004. Currently, he is the member secretary of the Nodi Odhikar Moncho, who is based in Dhaka, which is a transboundary network of rivers and riverine communities of Nepal, India, and Bangladesh formed in 2017. He is a member of the GBM CSO network, which we all know has been developed by the IUCN. He is also a life member of the Bangladesh Puribe Shandulo, a very important organization of Bangladesh. He has facilitated several initiatives on research and policy advocacy. A number of, he has written a number of articles uh, uh, in mainstream print and online media. He has also organized and conducted many seminars, policy dialogues, workshops, and training. Uh, I request now Shamsher to deliver his presentation. Okay, thank so, you, also. thank you, thank you, uh, Pakhtada. And practically this uh, presentation uh, prepared uh, me and Parthuda jointly, and on behalf of the uh, co-organizing committee, uh, uh, organizing committee, I am presenting. Uh, before going to detail, I would like to share a point that is very famous in Bangladesh and very uh, popular uh, point. Uh, his name is uh, Hassan Habib. Uh, unfortunately, this is in Bangla. I am very sorry who did not understand the Bangla right this moment. And I'm going to read out the poem. Uh, uh, the name of poem is uh, Meghna Parir Chile. Ami Meghna Parir Chile, Ami Meghna Nodir Ne, Meghna Nodir Dhever Buke, Tale Noka Be, Ami Berai Heshe Kele, Ami Meghna Nodir Chile. Magna nodir ne ami magna pare bari, itche hole e partike, opare de pari. Tale 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 noka, duhate jai be, ami magna nodir ne. Pahar shoman, hever buke, noka amar bashe, make muluker pahar teke, chore chapta ashe, matharupor muski hashe, bizlina mer me, ami magna nodir ne. Amar dever shonge gola goli, dever shonge kala. ঝড়ের সঙ্গে লড়াই করে কাটাই সারা বেলা দেশ থেকে যায় দেশান্তরে মনের নৌকা বে আমি মেঘনা নদীর ছেলে আমি মেঘনা নদীর নে দিস ইজ প্র্যাকটিক্যালি দা হাউ টু হাউ টু কোপিং মেকানিজম এন্ড হাউ টু লিভিং উইথ দা রিভার বেসিন দ্যাট ইজ স্টেটেড ভেরি নাইসলি উইথ ইন শর্ট পয়েম আই পার্সোনালি সেল টু হাসান হাবিব for this point. Now, uh, this is actually a slide of uh, river, uh, river uh, Meghna Basin map. This is covered uh, India and Bangladesh. And I'm, I'm going to uh, sh share detail about the, sorry, just one minute. Yes, the river and its basin. The Meghna is one of the largest transboundary. I'm just actually uh, read, reading out uh, because the, everything 
uh, everything everything is uh, very uh, clear uh, would be clear to not need to actually clarify again therefore i'm i'm uh, sharing and i'm actually reading out the pre uh, presentation the meghna is the one of largest transboundary river in south asia shared uh, by india and bangladesh uh, meghna basin is drained by at least 29 transboundary rivers shared by India and Bangladesh, which combinedly carried a discharge of about 150 billion cubic meters into the Bay of Bengal. Uh, this basin is uh, characterized by a tropical monsoon climate with significant variation in the rainfall and temperature throughout the region. While Arrange rainfall in the Meghna Basin is 2640 millimeter during the monsoon. The intensity of the rainfall may be as high as 350 millimeter per day. Local climate uh, variety widely depending on topography, forest, and urbanization. <coughs> Uh, the river and its basin. <coughs> With a uh, area of 82,000 square kilometer, its basin covered an area equal uh, to almost twice the size of Bhutan and Switzerland. About 47,000 square kilometer, that is 57 of the basin are located in India and 35,000 square kilometer, that is 43 of the total area is in Bangladesh. The river is known as Barak Kushiara Shurma in India. In India, the basin included the Meghalaya plateaus in the north, part of Assam, Manipur, and Nagaland in the northwest and Mizoram, and Tripura in the southwest. In Bangladesh, Meghna Basin included the upland of Sile Division, known for their extensive system of the wetland and fisheries resources. The Chitang Hill on the southeast and the Madhupur track on the west, which make transboundary boundary between the Brahmaputra and Meghna Basin. Basin population. The lower part of Basin uh, in Bangladesh is more densely uh, populated than a upper part of located in India. The population of the uh, seven how district in the upper Meghna Basin in Bangladesh is around 19.37 uh, square uh, cubic million with the average household size of 5.3 people. The India part of the basin has estimated a population of less than 10 million spread across the six states. The catcher Karim Ganj, Hailakandi district of the South Asham, representing the plants of the Barak Valley, plains of the Barak Valley, have a, a population of less than 3 million and can be considered the most densely population part of the basin in Meghna Basin in India. The combined population of other five states, uh, Manipur, Meghalaya, Mizoram, Nagaland, and Tripura, within the basin is less than, less than 13 million. Resource and potential. Uh, communities are highly adaptive to water resources and riverine environments. A hub of aquatic resource, crop production, livestock, poultry, ensuring food security, water-centric livelihood to millions of communities. 
large source of fresh water with rich aquatic biodiversity. One of the uh, biggest fish reposition uh, repositories with the, num uh, with the numerous river of wetland and suitable habits, rich in minerals, natural beauties of waterscapes with a huge possibility of ecotourism as well as aquatourism. Common environmental concerns uh, that is very important for way forward our discussion and activities. Uh, human uh, intervention such as uh, dam for hydropower project, road construction, uh, mining, querying are mining and querying are disturbing water flows, aquatic biodiversity, wetland, and river ecosystems. Reducing uh, local variety of fish production, recently reducing that is the environmental concerns, reducing local variety of agriculture production, reducing local variety of livestock and poultry production, reducing forest resources, unsustainable mining, lack of coordination among the stakeholders, management authorities, and development projects, increasing toxic, toxicity into water and decreasing natural fish production, population exploitation causing increasing pressure on resources such as water, fish, agriculture, land, and forest. Major climate concern, lack of adequate scientific knowledge and understanding of the nature uh, and climate change due to paucity of data, paucity of data, information, and lack of scientific and management collaboration between the, between the two countries. Changing uh, pattern of rainfall, seasons, and temperature with the increasing uncertainty that affecting agriculture, fisheries, and navigation. More soil erosion from the, more soil erosion from the upland and flash flood impacting low laying uh, wetland and their agriculture productivity. Increasing flood erosion and shifting monsoon adding to vulnerability of riverine communities. Magna Basin is, uh, uh, is projecting to experience more flooding in the near future with an increase about the 19.1% in annual runoff, more than, uh, more than for the Brahmaputra 6.7% and the Ganga 13.3% increasing high storm like light, lightning enhancing disaster risk potential thank you thank you for listening this presentation Partha, you are muted Thank you, thank you, thank you, Samseer. And you uh, have not only you know, covered a large ground for your introductory presentation, but also you have finished just in time. Uh, now, with that kind of a you know, broad uh, overview, it's now time to, for us to go to specifics. And uh, uh, our next speaker, our next speaker is, uh, Dr. Arun Jutinath, who is exactly going to do that uh, uh, because he's going to speak on spatial and temporal trend analysis of annual temperature and precipitation in the Magna Basin, where I'm sure he's going to provide us with a lot of facts and figures about how uh, climate is uh, varying, changing uh, all over the Magna Basin and, and probably with more uh, information from the Indian part of the basin. Dr. Arun Jutinath is an assistant professor of ecology and environmental science at the Assam University, which is located in Silchar in Assam. He is an ecologist with diverse experience in research and teaching. He holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Botany, a Master of Science degree in Ecology, and a PhD degree in Plant Ecology and Management. Dr. Nath obtained his 
post doctoral degree from the Ohio State University, USA. He has over 15 years of experience in, sus <coughs> in sustainable land management and climate change mitigation research, which is the focus of his research. He has published more than 80 research articles in peer reviewed journals. Dr. Nath is an academic editor of a very well known journal called Clause One. And he's also in the uh, editorial board of another journal called Climate Risk and Management. His research interest includes ecosystem carbon dynamics at regional and landscape scale. Now I request Dr. Nath to deliver his presentation. Dr. Uh, Dr. Parto, so kind of you for this introduction. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, a very good afternoon to the extreme panelists. Uh, the other members of the IUCN and the attendees. So here with, I will take the opportunity to sh share with you the, just a moment, let me share it. It's coming, it's coming. It's coming? Okay. Yeah. Put it in the slide mode only. It's fine? Okay. Nice, nice. Okay, so uh, here in this presentation, uh, I will try to provide some insight into the you know, current uh, temperature and precipitation trend that we are having in the Magna Basin. And uh, I'll also try to uh, give some insight into the magnitude of changes in temperature and rainfall for the whole Magna Basin. And based on the output of the data, uh, we have tried to identify some of the important hotspots for the Magna Basin. And I, I believe the output of the presentation will help the policymaker and other appropriate bodies to come up with more appropriate mitigative measures to conserve the, the, conserve the integrity of the Magna Basin. Uh, so uh, this is a Magna Basin extent. Uh, uh, Mr. Shamsar Ali already have uh, shared the uh, Magna Basin uh, figure with us. Uh, I will add something more with this. Uh, like in the right side, if you see uh, the Indian part of the Magna Basin that covers roughly 60% of the Magna Basin and the rest 40% is covered by the Bangladesh part. Now, uh, the basin is divided into three uh, major parts based on the, uh, I mean, hydrology. Uh, here into this, uh, the part of the basin uh, formed by the river Barak, the first part. The second part is formed by the confluence of the Kushiara and the Shurma River, and which forms the upper Magna Basin. And here we are having the lower Magna Basin uh, after the Magna enters into the river Padma. So basically these uh, three broad uh, categories can be made, made based on the uh, hydrology of the whole basin. Now in terms of geography, this includes uh, the different states from Northeast India. Uh, including the Magna Plat uh, Meghalaya Plateaus and other parts of the Meghalaya state of India, then parts of uh, Assam, Manipur, Nagaland, Mizoram, and Tripura. So six different states are there uh, into the Magna Basin uh, from the India part. And uh, from the Bangladesh part, we are having uh, like the Chattogram, Silet, and the Dhaka. I mean, these are the broad regions that falls under this Magna Basin. Uh, so as because I will be sharing some information on the changes in the temperature and precipitation, uh, so it is important how I have collected data. It is important to share how I have collected the data and how I have analyzed this. So actually the data we are gathered from uh, the uh, Google Earth Engine. This is a you now common practice uh, from where we, I mean, all the climate uh, researcher, they generate the data from the Google Earth Engine and the platform where from the data were collected was the Terra Climate Data Collection. So what did, what sort of data we collected? We collected monthly maximum temperature data, monthly minimum temperature data, as well as the annual mean annual temperature data for last 30 years from 1990 to 2020. Similarly, we also collected the precipitation data, total precipitation and the uh, and total annual precipitation for last 30 years. So what we did after collection is that we try to run many of these parametric and non-parametric approach because we have to look for the trend if there is any trend in the temperature as well as in precipitation data. And if there is a trend, then we have to check whether the trend is statistically significant or not. 
and if this is statistically significant then we have to check with the magnitude with the changes so the statistical uh, i mean significant difference we are worked out with uh, non parametric approaches using the mankandel test and the magnitude of the changes was calculated with the help of tails and slopes and the whole no this uh, data analysis were performed using the software called as earth trend modeler software and the arc gis 10.4.1 and just a moment and the output of the study based on the temperature and rainfall these were integrated through a weight average protocol and based on this weight average protocol the climate change hotspot impact on the eco region what we did we also try we tried to identify the eco regions in the magna basin different eco regions in the magna basin and try to have a look how the climate is changing in different parts of the eco region so actually this is these are what are the main objectives i am going to share with you all here now uh, mr shamsar ali was uh, mentioning about you no know, the human population density is more in many parts of the bangladesh part of uh, basin as well as in southern assam the borak valley part from indian part we are having higher population density in the southern assam so this whole region uh, is interestingly has got more human population density and if we all also look into the spatial distribution of three decadal average temperature data we are having more the temperature in this region the region could be this uh, these are i mean these are low altitude areas uh, i mean elevation is less uh, hardly we are having elevation up to 100 meter here for this region and so this could be the reason why we are having more temperature for this this part uh, i mean this part of the basin whereas comparatively the temperature is less when we look into the image for the meghalaya nagaland and other parts of mizoram so some parts of bangladesh southern parts of assam comparatively we are having mean temperature more for this region in comparison to other part now in the right one if you look uh, into the um, three decadal average uh, annual rainfall data so we are having highest amount of rainfall for this meghalaya region especially the east and west uh, khasi hills district and obviously we are having the highest rainfall area of the world here so this particular area is receiving more amount of rainfall in comparison to other parts the moderate amount we are if we look into this moderate amount we are having in the northern parts of the silat with a, with a average of around 3000 uh, mm of rainfall and in other parts of the magna basin we are having the rainfall that ranges between uh, 1500 to 2500 mm so this is the current status of the three decadal average data on temperature and the rainfall now if we look into the trend how this is temperature and rainfall changing for the whole magna basin so number of parameters we have estimated for the annual rainfall we have computed the data for median uh, median of annual rainfall change mean of annual rainfall change minimum of annual rainfall change maximum of annual rainfall change and interestingly for all those for the last three decades the trend is positive i mean for the whole magna basin the uh annual rainfall is increasing similarly if we look into the range range is also increasing and on the right side if we look into the standard deviation of annual rainfall so this shows a negative trend so this means the increase in the temperature is i mean increase in the annual rainfall is consistent over the time period similarly uh, we can have a look into the trend for the annual temperature we have computed data with respect to median of annual mean temperature median of annual mean temperature maximum of annual mean temperature and minimum of annual mean temperature and the trend is also positive here so this is very interesting the magna basin is one among such place that is experiencing increase in temperature as well as increase in rainfall i mean this sort of trend uh, we we hardly see for many other regions uh, if we look into the many of the research articles but for especially for magna basin we are getting an interesting trend where both the temperature and the rainfall is increasing okay this is some other statistics so uh, so this was the trend that i was talking about now let us see the trend is statistically significant or not uh now into the box if you can see so this part shows the statistically significant 
uh, trend in annual precipitation. And if we zoom this, we can see this, this particular region is experiencing a statistically significant changes in the precipitation over the three decade data. And which are the areas? The areas, uh, the, this particular area covers parts of the Meghalaya, then from the Bangladesh part, we are having the, uh, the Silet and the Dhaka areas, I mean, Dhaka regions and some parts of the Nagaland and the Manipur. So these are the some places which are showing statistically significant increase in the annual precipitation. Now, let us have a look into the uh, magnitude, how much this is increasing. Now, if we look into the uh, I mean, precipitation increase for this uh, Meghalaya region, and including some parts of Silets and Dhaka region, so annual increase is as high as 30 to 40 millimeter per year. So for this region, every year 30 to 40 millimeter of rainfall is increasing. Uh, this may be alarming. This may be alarming in the sense uh, a higher amount of rainfall may accelerate um, soil erosion process and which will cause eutrophication and other consequences in the downstream. So, uh, and other than the Meghalaya region, uh, a greater part of the Silet and Southern Asham, these are also showing an annual average, I mean, annual rate of increase of 20 to 30 millimeter per year. And for rest of the, uh, I mean, there is an increasing trend, but these are not so statistically significant. So this was the status of the annual precipitation for the whole Magna Basin. Let us look into the situation with the temperature. So, I mean, in comparison to annual precipitation, the statistical change, I mean, the area under the temperature is quite bigger. This is almost covering 50% of the whole Magna Basin. So almost in the 50% of the Magna Basin, we are experiencing statistically significant changes in the temperature. Why I am repeatedly referring to statistical changes? Because in climate science, we only refer to a change in the climate if it is statistically significant. So for the half part of the Magna Basin, this is evident that, that that climate change is evident from this data. Now, which are the areas uh, which are showing, uh, I mean, a higher rate of change in temperature, so parts of the Meghalaya, parts of Nagaland, parts of Manipur, and from Bangladesh part, we are having the, from the Silet regions. So these are showing higher rate of increase in the temperature in comparison to other parts of the Magna Basin. Now let us have a look into the um, magnitude, how much the temperature is increasing. For these parts of Meghalaya, some parts of, I mean the northern parts of Silet and the northern parts of Nagaland and uh, the Manipur, uh, the decadal increase in temperature ranges from 0.23 to 0.26. So, I mean, per 10 year, the temperature increase for this region just from 0.23 degree to 0.26. And this is again alarming. I mean, the value seems to be very less, but in terms of the whole area, when we consider the region, this increase is very high. I mean, in, in, in a century, there will be as much as four or five degree increase in the temperature for this region. For this, you no, know, for this, especially the Meghalaya and some parts of Silet. So per century, there are maybe as high as three to four degree increase in temperature for this region. And this is the ambient increase in ambient temperature. And three and four degrees is quite high. Many of the plants and uh, you know, animals may not adapt to the such changes. So this will lead to the local extinction of many of the species. So, uh, and now if we look into the other parts of uh, like Manipur and Southern Assam, uh, the increase in decadal temperature is uh, around 0.2 degree. So these are, these are showing the moderate range of changes in the temperature. So now based on the outputs, what we did, we tried to identify the hotspot. I mean, which are the areas which are experiencing both increases, high amount of increase in temperature as well as increase in uh, precipitation. And at the same time, what we do it, we developed a digital elevation map for the whole um, uh, Magna Basin. And we tried to see, I mean, whether the changes are related with the elevation. And the result is yes. Uh, I mean, this Meghalaya part, which is having uh, 1500 to 2000 millimeter elevation and some parts of Nagaland, which is having 2000 meter of elevation, these particular parts are you now experiencing uh, higher rate of temperature as well as higher rate of temperature. 
and in terms of the climate change hotspot i mean after integrating both the temperature data and the rainfall data especially this meghalaya part and parts of some parts of silat is showing the these are the hottest hottest of all the hotspot for the magna basin because this particular region is experiencing both increase in temperature as well as the increase in the rainfall now if we look into the soil of this region the soil is acrisol uh, in general acrisol so acrisol are those soil which are having less ph uh, and they have low base saturation and they have low cation exchange capacity so the problem with acrisol is that uh, the subsoil in this sort of magna basin soil is very toxic in nature because we have got high amount of aluminum in the soil i mean subsoil so high amount of Uh, aluminium in the soil so i mean under a increase in precipitation pre precipitation scenario and this is also true that over the period we are losing the quality of the forest for the whole basin i mean we are having a i mean for the indian side uh, there is an increase in the percentage of forest cover but if we look into the quality of the forest we are losing the dense forest cover and we are mainly represented by the open forest cover so in open forest what happens the canopy cover is less it is around 40% so open area is around 60% so under the increase in rainfall scenario what will happen the you no know, there will be more of the rain that will strike the soil directly there will be the splash <coughs> splashing of the soil and that will accelerate the you no know, soil erosion problem and ultimately this will create problem to the downstream this uh, downstream rivers and in terms of uh, eco region so especially the subtropical forest for this meghalaya and the other parts uh, these are seems to be more vulnerable and the subtropical forests are mainly dominated by uh, subtropical pine and um, subtropical broadleaf forest and if we look into this uh, bangladesh part of the basin uh, these are mainly dominated by moist deciduous forest so in terms of severity some parts of the bangladesh these are also experiencing moderate to high rate of of changes in terms of climate change hotspot and uh, the basin is also characterized by tropical rainforest especially the mizoram manipur kachin rainforest and so this will also experiences uh, you no know, problems with these changes in the climate so these are the broad you no know, coverage with respect to changes in the climate uh, i mean some of the important hotspot of the climate and and uh, the different eco regions eco regions for the basin so and at last what we did we tried to uh, enumerate the area under each of the category and our study shows that uh, around 28% of this basin is experiencing high to severe rate of changes in the climate around 25% is showing moderate rate of uh, changes in the climate so perhaps uh, at least this data shows uh, the situation uh, for the basin is alarming and perhaps this is the right time we must come up with appropriate you know uh, appropriate uh, management protocols so that uh, we can maintain a permanent uh, vegetation cover on the soil vegetation cover is very important because for the acrisol most of the nutrients are stored in the vegetation and soil are very poor so once the vegetation is gone Uh, it's very difficult to you know un develop another vegetation in those those poor soil so it is very important to maintain a permanent cover a layer of organic uh, a layer of organic soil on the soil, uh, on the cover, top of the soil so some management protocols that highlights managing the soil at the upper reaches of the good now upper reaches of the uh, basin will help also maintaining the downstream of the basin so uh, with this uh, i am concluding my presentation on the uh, changes in the temperature and the precipitation regime for the magna basin thank you thank you so much uh, dr nath i mean as we expected your presentation was very informative very insightful and uh, we all know that i mean the, the upper part of magna basin and including uh, the indian part in southern assam and uh, nearby a uh, hilly region is usually data deficient in that context the kind of information you have provided and also you have informed us about the methodology you have adopted and uh, what i uh, i mean it it was really you know uh, useful and what i especially appreciate about your uh, 
presentation is that even without using you know uh, one of those so called uh, complicated climate models simply by using you know earth gis and some statistical information you have come out with so useful so much of useful patterns and trends in rainfall and temperature and uh, what you have observed is that you know the rainfall is increasing almost everywhere in meghna basin also is in agreement of what samser said in the in his introductory presentation that i mean the uh, future uh, flood potential in the meghna basin is going to be high because of climate change because there is a, it is projected to have much more run off and mostly from rainfall that is understood than the other two uh, basins of ganga and brahmaputra so these are very important results thank you very much uh, dr nath Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our uh, next presenter is uh, from Bangladesh. He is Dr. Uh, Shahid Ali Ajhar. He will tell us about the ecological changes in the wetlands in Meghna River Basin of Bangladesh. Dr. Ajhar is uh, a very renowned expert on fisheries. in bangladesh he has worked in several government agencies he has long experience of working in government departments in bangladesh uh, and he has consistently remained en engaged in uh, different government programs uh, for developing a sustainable and climate resilient fishery sector in bangladesh currently he is working as a community development and mobilization expert in the in a very famous project and this project is called sustainable coastal and marine fisheries project which is now being carried out by the department of fisheries government of bangladesh it's all over to dr shahid ali ajhar sir please uh, thank you Uh, is it visible to all it's visible sir it's visible you can start now. okay 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 yes, thank yes. you yes uh, mr singha and uh, dr runda excellent he presented uh, on the magbari bhadwesi the different issues um, that this was uh, research findings and that will be very fruitful uh, in our uh, wetland management in the deeper basin um, my presentation uh, is of ecological changes in wetlands in meghna river basin of bangladesh uh, but uh, since i worked in the how region about 20 years uh, so my presentation will be based on how region particularly uh subshir bhai and uh, i already mentioned that meghna form due to the confluence of surma and kushiara rivers bangladesh and originate from the hilly regions of eastern india uh, this empties into bay of bengal in bhula district by a four principal mouths uh, named the tetulia uh, shahabaspur hatia and uh, bamhi my uh, my uh, discussion on how region since how uh, you know how uh, this is what an ecosystem uh, this existed in northern eastern part of bangladesh mostly seven how district uh, but some adjacent area also the total number of fowl in bangladesh according to bangladesh wetland and uh, wetland department uh, that means what uh, wetland that uh, how uh, development department the 440 uh, 411 uh, as per uh, two, uh, 2015 record and within this are two big how that means a tangwar how another hakaluki how uh, iucn work in tangwar how Um, so many years, and uh, this is a Ramsar site also, and also ECA. Hakaluki also declared an ECA. Uh, if we uh, see the our population, our population about twelve point four two percent of the country, and two point three percent of the total area of the country uh, as per population census, 
2011. Uh, before that, um, uh, I want to mention that my presentation basically um, uh, based on the findings of the project, uh, like the mass project. Uh, you, uh, some of you know, they were not project funded by USAID, was first phase and second phase. But then uh, community-based fisheries management project phase one and phase two, uh, funded by DFID. And then um, uh, another project uh, that is uh, implemented by LG of Bangladesh, the Hilif. And uh, then how uh, another project, IPEC, integrated productivity and management, also our partner was India. And then Krill project. Uh, also, USAID funded project and the Healy Power Infrastructure and the Library Improvement Project also. The findings, that means uh, some findings um, addressed in these presentations. Uh, what is the potential it is of how? Uh, I saw practically about 20 years in how. The human resource, a very hard worker, vast water resources, very, very essential for irrigation, huge wetland flora and fauna, very rich in what and flora and fauna. As, um, still uh, more than 100 species available in every Upazala Thor district. Vast scope of agriculture, PEDI, that means the Bodo PEDI, 12% uh, of total production of, the Bang of Bangladesh are uh, fulfilled by how production. That is only PEDI, uh, Bodo PEDI. Vast fisher resources, uh, about 260 species uh, is available in Bangladesh, uh, the place in Haurere, and total Haurere is a breeding center, natural breeding center. With a rich in biodiversity, very plant, and there are different um, birds, uh, fishes, aquatic vertebrates and invertebrates are available in Haurere. And low cost navigation and communication, transportation, vast area of plantation, unique opportunity, Is there an audio problem, Dr. Ali? Scope of diversity library. It is a problem with his internet connection. I think so. Dr. Ali, there is a problem with the internet connection. Dr. Raza, could you please uh, switch off your video? I think your uh, internet is not good enough to for this kind of uh, presentation. video. The audio is not clear, sir. I think screen, it's okay. The screen has disappeared, I think. Yeah, I think you'll join again. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. You do the same thing. Uh, we can continue. Maybe he can join in. I think already there are a few questions and we can take a, a bit of a pause and um, uh, request participant if they want to ask any question. Um, Dr. Nath had a very good presentation. Um, and uh, so, I mean, we understand. One of the things that I wanted to ask Dr. Nath is that so you are saying that in, within the Meghna Basin also, if we look at Meghalaya Plateau is one of the most impacted by climate change. Yes, yes. Seems. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, internet. Okay. So, sorry. Of current, video of current. No, I think you can use, I think you were using something uh, different. If you can normally, the video was working well. But with that kind of a presentation mode, no. So I think maybe you can just switch on your video and try once again. But this discussion can go on in the meantime. Dr. Nath can respond. Dr. Azhar, could you hear us? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, you can continue speaking. Yes, yes. Yes, yes uh, I want to say, uh, however, I'm uh, sorry, Larry, uh, for interruption. Yeah. 
please and share the, it in the shop. Uh, uh, and uh, there are so many potentialities also in the how. And now I uh, think that the how is very, very uh, seriously affected by climate change effect uh, because uh, due to uh, uh, different types of effect, how resources are very, very, uh, very much, uh, very sir, much your affected. Is not appearing, sir. We are hearing you, you are audible, but your presentation is not appearing, sir. You have to screen share again. Yes, yes. Yeah, it yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, uh, this uh, already I mentioned. And now, uh, impacts of climate change in Magdalene River Basin, particularly in our region, first flash flood, early flood, long time flooding. This is a very common. Uh, in 2017, it was a very serious problem in how uh, many fish species and also birds uh, also died due to uh, pollution after flash flood. And very inundated and um, by our farmers. Some are becoming hotter, irregular monsoon, untimely rainfall, early rainfall, late rainfall, heavy rainfall of a short period causing water logging and landslides, very little rainfall in dry period, increased river flow and inundation during monsoon. Heavy wave action, locally known as AFAL, for a few days, resulting in home state surrounding band destruction. This, this is occurred in, uh, during full monsoon, and days or, uh, 10 days or 15 days, so not more than that, but heavy wave action. And uh, surrounding home state surroundings have broken seriously. The rock damage due to flash flowers and monsoon uh, flowers. Uh, it is a common phenomenon in our country. Um, uh, crop failure due to broad chlorum uh, cold spell, and see of prevailing crop practices, uh, river bank erosion. This is very much common. Death due to extreme heat and sometimes extreme cold. Deforestation, increased mortality, uh, morbidity, sickness, prevalence of outbreak of cholera and diarrhea, etc. And thunder, hailstorm. Uh, thunder due to thunder. Uh, recently, uh, so many people died. Uh, changes in how region. What are the changes? Uh, that mentioned also uh, uh, the China, uh, uh, before uh, uh, that, uh, my previous presenter all, all mentioned uh, that uh, um, uh, due to uh, uh, sedimentation, erosion, uh, downstream affected, like Bangladesh. Natural habitat changes. Huge position, particularly on our countries and here in Bangladesh, soil deposition duplicity. Depth and biodiversity, river and natural depletion. It is affected. In our record, uh, IUC 2000 study, and in 2015, uh, 64 threatened. That means uh, it is increasing. Erosion and breaking of river bank and homestead surrounding area increasing at alarming rate. Every year, heavy wave action, local in Mozambique, that also mentioned, home, homestead surrounding bank and tank destruction, heavy rainfall, short causing water logging and landslides. Uh, including cyclones, storms, surges, floods, river bank erosion, destroy the damage of uh, people's properties, including land, house, cattens, other livelihoods, assets, and living assets. In Haur area, some people live uh, in the Haur basin in the winter season. Uh, in monsoon, they are bound to uh, migrate from uh, Haur basin to uh, because of flood. Frequent disaster due to drought and uh, due to drought and spawning period time effects on 
fecundity. This is serious in Bangladesh because total hard is breeding, breeding ground. This is uh, particularly um, uh, SIS, small indigenous species. They breed in floodplain or um, a river bend or beans and something like that um, habitat. Uh, due to drought, the, the laid eggs destroyed and sometimes if rain falls later or water comes later, the breeding uh, becomes later and breeding uh, performance become very less. And fecundity, that means egg laying um, uh, capacity and egg carrying capacity decrease and number of egg also decreased uh, as per some reverse findings. Environment degradation like water pollution, degradation of land resources, ultimately resource food and uh, health securities, increase of food water, uh, life property settlement, livestock, livelihoods and others. Many flora and fauna species have become threatened. In case of some plant species, uh, some local fruit in Bengali, this is called matma, uh, shapla, poddo, etc. are very rare now. Uh, some of them are very much threatened. In case of fish species, species some carbs are threatened factors due to uh, 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 the outcome of uh, that means uh, outcomes from climate change effect. And uh, and then uh, in case of uh, breeding season. Uh, in some times of my epidemia, but it's, it, it's late from um, uh, early season or late season, etc. And simple um, change uh, that was uh, recorded in 2012, uh, 2014, uh, just op occupying the uh, village, uh, that is wetland area, but that is wetland encroachment, getting opportunity as a result of soil deposition. Due to soil deposition, so many um, area, um, uh, the, the musclemen, that is official peoples, are getting opportunity to uh, make them aquaculture field. And so many fish farms already established by them in Tangwar Haur area, in Hail Haur area, uh, and, and some other Haka Loki Haur area, and total Haur area. Let me see, in see the map, the red spot area, and then 2000, uh, 2000, um, uh, in 2000, only one 100, 100 hectare. But in 2007, you see the red portion increased. In 2011, increased, and 2014 is a much increased. That means occupied uh, by aquaculture or paddy field. And now policy support. In case of policy support in Bangladesh, there are some policies and uh, acts and rules. Bangladesh climate change strategy and action plan adopted by government uh, Bangladesh in 19 uh, in 2009. Environment Act. Uh, this uh, 1995, uh, last amendment uh, in 2010, Fish Act 1950, and Fish Act Strategy 1998, Bangladesh Biological Diversity Act 2017, Natural Water Policy, one, uh, 1999, so they are all written, uh, Government Jalmahal Management Policy 2009, and some others also. Uh, the support that caused our Conserve the nature, uh, the conserve the how area, conserve the fish act. In fish act, um, in how area, this is common phenomena to bailing up water from bill or dees or um, uh, river portion or dry the dry them and they harvest fish. These are common practice. But uh, our, by our act, government try to protect them, to save them, and to stop the bailing out of water and for conservation of biodiversity. Ecosystem based adaptation. How the farmers, fishers, and, and general people that climate change effects. And the, number one, uh, in Bangladesh, there are so many projects implemented uh, through approach of co management. That is, in case of co management approach, uh, many, many stakeholders are involved and they can do by taking decisions by themselves. And it is a, a bottom up. Um, approach and the government helps them. Um, CBFM one, two, mass, mass project, uh, CBFM uh, two project, 
uh, IPEC project, AID project, also from where is going to approach, uh, adopted in white lab. Hybrid restoration restores connectivities. This is the vital work in our country, and every year we are doing this. And because, uh, the, the, you know, we are living uh, beside a drain, like drain. If we think the Magna, Magna Jamuna Pata is a drain, then we are living beside Bank of the River. And, and every year, due to siltation, due to sedimentation, all wetlands are uh, depth of wildlife increasing. So massive plantation, particularly swamp trees and fruit bearing trees, swamp trees uh, uh, and fruit bearing trees, uh, fruit, fruit bearing trees are very fruitful for biodiversity. Establish a wetland sanctuary. This is the only one tool in the world still to produce more fish naturally in wetland and other conservation tools. Implementation of fish act strictly. Early variety, petty cultivation already started in our country, some variety, early variety, uh, to step from uh, flood, uh, uh, flush flood or flood. All the native tropical cultivation already in winter season. Uh, uh, our farmers are produced uh, uh, by uh, child grass. Uh, uh, they protect their, their uh, home state by uh, production wall. Besides, child grass they use. Summer root instead of all weather root. Very, very effective too. Dr. Ali, please conclude now. Dr. Ali, please conclude now. Summer root instead of all weather root. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is a paper. Thank you. Many thanks, uh, Dr. Ali. I mean, uh, the subject matter of your presentation was so important for this entire conference and especially for this session. Because uh, Dr. Ali, I think you uh, are probably aware that in the Indian part of the basin, there are not uh, many people uh, to whom the word how is familiar. Uh, again, there are people who uh, uh, think that how and wetlands are uh, synonymous. I mean, they are one and the same. But very few people know that, you know, uh, houses are definitely wetlands in themselves, but houses also have very distinct characteristics. They are not only water goodies, they are a uh, uh, full ecosystem in themselves, they are full social and cultural systems, and houses are highly, highly vulnerable to upstream interventions. And uh, from yeah. your presentations, we have come to know about different, uh, a large number of factors that are affecting houses. And climate change is only one of them. I'm uh, very sorry that your presentation was, you know, disturbed by some technical snags. But even then, we have got a very good insight into what is happening in the how and what is its relationship to climate change. Thank you very much, uh, Doctor. Uh, thank you very much, Doctor uh, Ali. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, uh, respected uh, audience. Uh, our next presenter is a young climatologist, a climate scientist from the state of Meghalaya. Her name is Dr. Marbaka or Mary Lindre. Uh, Dr. Lindre is working now as a project scientist with the Meghalaya Climate Change Center, which is a, a wing of the Meghalaya Basin Development Authority. Uh, she has been working there since uh, 2016. In these centers, he's involved in coordinating and facilitating climate actions in the state of Meghalaya, which includes knowledge creation, capacity building, conducting training programs, awareness creation among different stakeholder groups, formulation of adaptation and mitigation plans for the state and review and updation of the state action plan on climate change. And uh, she uh, has to work in tandem with various line departments uh, of the Government of Megala for these purposes. Her past experience includes working as a research fellow in the Regional Center of Ministry of Environment and Forest, as well as the National Deforestation and Eco Development Board, Ceylon. She her MSc in Forestry and her PhD degree in Environmental Science from the Department of Environmental Studies, Northeastern Hill University. And she will give us an idea of what is happening to the climate regime of the state of Megala. So it's all over to Dr. Ladinari, please. Thank you. Hello, can you hear me, sir? Yeah, I can hear you. Do you think uh, one of us should uh, share your screen? Yeah, or... please, please, yeah. please. Let me try. Let me try.
Can you see this? Yeah, yeah. You can see this? Yeah. You can put in the slide mode, yeah. Sure. I'm putting this. So tell me when I need I have to change the slide. Huh? Okay. Okay. Uh, at the onset, I would like to thank the organizer of this forum, IUCN Asia, the program officer, Sir Bishwa Randan, Dr. Partha, for having me in this uh, forum. And I think I'm I think I don't have much experience like all the other speakers ahead of me had. So I hope you can you can be with me to hear, like I would like to share with you about the climate change scenario that is happening in Meghalaya. Next slide. Next slide. Okay. Uh, we know that Meghna is a transboundary uh, river chaired by, by India and Bangladesh. However, the overall climate scenario that I would like to present in here is mainly about Meghalaya region. And maybe I'll just touch a little bit about the Northeast region from the secondary data that I'm collecting from other researchers. Yes, like uh, we, have, we have we have here from Dr. Nath also, like he has given uh, much insight of what is happening in even in Meghalaya, the climate change has really been affected in the state of Meghalaya. So yes, we have witnessed many climate batteries. We have had many incidences of landslide, flash floods, increase in temperature. We have the erratic rainfall. And then we have also seen that uh, in 2018, on 19th of August, there has been a rise in so 7.4 degrees Celsius above normal in Sharaponji. Uh, next slide. Uh, to, uh, to base our knowledge more about climate change, the state has undergone various scientific studies. We have done many studies with IIT Gandhinagar, IISC Bangalore to understand more about the climate change that is happening in our state so that we can have a specific knowledge so that we can, we can tune in the adaptation plan according to the uh, impact that we are going to face. Uh, so we, we know that the climate change impact is going to hamper mostly the climate sensitive sector like the agriculture, water resources, forest, health, sanitation, and especially the rural poor will be the most affected in this uh, climate change. Next slide. So these are a few of the studies that has been carried out by the state uh, under the Meghalaya Climate Change Center in coordination and also running independent uh, by the center itself. Uh, I would like to, uh, in my presentation, I will brief a little bit about the climate change scenario that has been carried out by IIT Gandhinagar and some of the impacts of climate change on forest and biodiversity carried out by ISC Bangalore and some of the perception of the people of how they have understood the climate change that is happening in our state. Next slide. Uh, next slide. Uh, going by the scientific evidence, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, I think the IT Gandhinagar has done an excellent job where they have gathered a lot of historical data to understand more about the climate change that is already happening and that is going to happen. So the observed climate change, which we have uh, past data of about 30 years, show that there is a steady rise in the temperature and also in the increase in rainfall. It has been shown that uh, the, in the increase in temperature increment has been 0 0.03 degrees centigrade per year. I think this uh, data which I'm showing here is uh, slightly relevant to what the data that Dr. Nath had already discussed in his previous slide. And we have seen that the rate of increase in temperature varied spatially with the southeastern part having experienced a slower rate as compared to the rest of the country. And in this climate prediction, uh, we also have the climate vulnerability hotspot. These are the area which are more susceptible to the change in the uh, in change in the climatic condition, that is to temperature and rainfall. Here we can see that uh, the overall trend show a consistent warming across the state. Uh, mainly, I think on the on the we can see the darker side where we where show that there is more increase in the temperature, and then we also have an increase in the rainfall. The pattern that is going to be happen mostly in the central plateau, which is more or less close to the Meghna Basin. Uh, next slide. 
uh, this, uh, like I have uh, talked about, these are the climate variety hotspots. The prediction data which shows that there is uh, temperature will rise by 2.2 degrees centigrade and more than 3.5 degrees centigrade will also be happen in the mild and the extreme scenario. The eastern part of the state is projected to experience an increase in rise in temperature. As for the rainfall, it has shown that there will be an increase in the climate in the rainfall also with an incidence of uh, which we will be having a shorter a shorter period of rain in a longer time, which shows that there will be a mass devastating. So the central plateau region is projected to experience an extreme in rainfall at a higher rate than the rest of the country. Next slide. Uh, in addition to the scientific data that I've presented, we also had a field survey uh, talking to the community, which we have surveyed around 173 villages, which they have also uh, uh, validate that they have also experienced the increase in temperature both in the summer and the winter season. And they have also uh, uh, experienced number of uh, an increase in number of hot days. And they, they, what they have done is majority of the farmers are aware of climate variability and most of them, they have also changed the sowing time of the crop, which shows that uh, the farmers are already adapt to the change in the climatic condition that they have experiencing. Uh, next slide. Uh, these are some of the likely impacts of climate change that is happening in our state. We have seen that uh, in most of uh, the past few years and even the continuous year, we have seen there's so much of lush floods, landslide, and even there is loss of life. And we we will be more we will suffer more with the change in the for, in, in the forest uh, regeneration because we have had some extinct species, which I will talk about it in the later slide. Uh, next slide. Uh, like I have told you, we have uh, carried out an impact studies, uh, which we have a field survey. Here, the people also have uh, have expressed their uh, observation where they said that there is a reduction in food sites and productivity of crops like bitternut and orange. They have seen an early sowing of some agricultural crops like maize, potato, ornamental flowers, and even early ripening of certain plant species, notably like guava, wild pepper, and pitcher plant, have recently changed their ripening period. This is what they have told us. And they have also uh, experienced an incidence of more pathogen pests on agricultural and horticultural crops, especially bay leaf, betel leaf, and potato. There is also an increased incidence of late blight in potato in recent past, causing severe yield losses to the farmers. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is one of the impact studies uh, on forest and biodiversity carried out by IIC uh, Bangalore. Here they have said that uh, about 75% of the total forested area has high or very high inherent vulnerability. And the most vulnerable forest that is going to experience is the district of North Garu Hills and Rivoy district. The most resident forest, they have uh, stated that the district of East Jainta Hills and East Kasi Hill will have the more resident forest. Next slide. Uh, in continuing of that, uh, we have seen that in the high emission scenario, the most vulnerable district which will face uh, on the forest and the biodiversity is a district of West Cassiel, Southwest Cassiel, East Cassiel, East Jainta Hills, West Jainta Hills, and Dupoi district as a whole will be facing most vulnerable in terms of forest and biodiversity. Whereas the forests in the district of Southwest Garu Hills and West Garu Hills are assessed to be the most resilient. Next slide. Uh, this is the climate volatility as assessment for Meghalaya, which has been done by we have been done in collaboration with IIT uh, Gauhati and IIT Mendi. Uh, the objective is to identify and rank the district of Meghalaya based on their vulnerability. So here we can see that the most vulnerable district in Meghalaya is West Kasi Hills. And the least uh, vulnerable district uh, is South Garu Hills. Even though we have seen here, but uh, that uh, the least vulnerable district doesn't mean that they are not going to be vulnerable, but it's just uh, show the ranking that which one is more comparatively more vulnerable than the other. Next slide. Uh, these, are sign of, these are some of the signs and indicators of climate change in Northeast India that I have collected from the other researcher, which shows that in 2009, Northeast India also one of the severe most drought. In 2012, we have the severe most flood in Azam, Meghalaya, Arushal Pradesh, and Mizoram. 
2013 has shown that there is drought like situation in many northeast districts. And in 2014, flood in Assam and Meghalaya drought in Manipur. And we are seeing that in the 2015 and 2016, warmest years have been recorded over 170 years. There is a delay onset of monsoon uh, in the year 2016, and Meghalaya was recorded with a deficit rainfall of 49%. And here we have another uh, severe flood in Assam where the tulag crop have been damaged, the production reduced by 21 to 30% due to the continuous rainfall. And even in 2017, we have a devastating flood in Assam, Manipur, and Tripura. Continuation with that, we also have another uh, incidence of uh, climate change, uh, climate variability 2008 with a light scale hailstorm affecting 237 villages in Meghalaya. And this uh, hailstorm has, has been observed to be a frequent phenomena in Meghalaya in the past years. Uh, flood in Nagaland, tornado in Naugang, deficit rainfall in Arunachal Pradesh, Manipur, and Meghalaya, monsoon withdrawn by 10 of October, which is very early. And 2019, we have seen that there is a delay also in the arrival of monsoon by five to eight days. Next slide. Uh, these are also some of the findings by Ravindranath Ektel and Das and Kumar, which show that the Northeast India region has warmed significantly during the last decade, and there has been an increase at a rate of 0.04 degrees centigrade per decade in the region. And there is also a positive trend in precipitation over Northeast for the period of 1901 to 2007. And in the extreme events, we are going to face more drought and more flood which is going to be a frequent phenomena in most of the northeast in northeastern states. Next slide. Uh, this is also another uh, another climate volatility assessment. I just want to uh, give an example here that we have done a climate volatility assessment for the 12 Himalayan state together with DST. So in this uh, in this uh, um, assessment that has been carried out, we have we can see that from here. Assam is going to be the vulnerable states. The ranking of Assam is number one. But uh, these states are least, even though Sikkim is at the last, these states are least vulnerable relative to other uh, Indian Himalayan region states and also have severe inherent driver or vulnerability that need to be addressed. Uh, I would like to put my point here why climate vulnerability assessment is important because uh, by doing this, we can at least identify some drivers which we can uh, which we can design, which can design the adaptation intervention specific to the area if we can identify the drivers uh, specific to that area of, of vulnerability. Next slide. Uh, these are some of the impacts of uh, climate change in Northeast India. I think everyone has spoke about this, and I have spoke about that in the previous slide also, that about 2 billion rupees due to flood damage has been caused during the year of 45 years between 1953 and 2004. And then we have some years of flood have been affected over 3.8 million hectares of Assam total area of 7.4 million hectares. Then floods inundated at least 2,000 villages every year. I think this is also a regular phenomenon that we have been observing in our uh, in our northeastern states. And uh, together with this, we have riverbank erosion, which destroy about 8,000 hectares of riparian line along the Brown Putra annually. Vast area, vast area in the region have been affected by erosion, like 1 million hectare in Assam, and so on and so forth. And next slide. Uh, these are some of the climate. Uh, like uh, I've put my slide uh, according to the uh, to, according to the uh, question that need to be addressed. So these are some of the examples that I would like to put here. The how the climate change has affected the natural resources. So in Meghalaya, for forest and biodiversity, the events of forest fires have been very frequent, and we have seen because we have the uh, the most of the region in Meghalaya is being covered by pine, which are more. Uh, susceptible to fire. And the unchecked shifting cultivation that has been carried out mostly in the upper region has seen that there has been a great loss of soil because of land degradation and soil erosion. Uh, Meghalaya is house of some endemic and endangered species, like I've said, and we have, we have seen many endemic species that have become extinct, like Adindina fritti, Apicula, Ilex, Scarabtonia, Arotiana, uh, etc. Dr. Linre, you have to conclude, please. Okay, next slide. 
you can just uh, yes uh, we also uh, faces a tremendous pressure of to meet the increasing demand of water for domestic use because there is rise in temperature and also we have water scarcity face in overall the region of Meghalaya especially in the eastern part of the region and we have seen that this Umeo river which is one of the lifeline of Meghalaya has also been greatly affected with the change in the climatic condition because of the sedimentation that has that it has been accum accumulated over the years uh, next slide. Uh, like I've said, like the agriculture is one of the sen climate sensitive sectors. So this sector has also been greatly uh, affected in our state because of the, by uh, giving instability in yields and low productivity. Next slide. Uh, the livelihood of the state, uh, because the state is uh, mainly uh, dependent on the sensitive uh, sector like agriculture, forest, and so eventually this the livelihood of the people will be greatly affected. Next slide. Uh, the status of information, I think from this, uh, from what I have learned, like when I try to search the data, we find like there are very few research being done but on the Northeastern state, especially in the Megha Meghna Basin. Uh, we have very less research on climate change and we have poor network of meteorological uh, stations so involving the r d institution in problem specific uh, studies will be very helpful we, we need to build the capacity of the local academic institution for undertaking state-centric climate change research and i think to share this knowledge we need to create a common platform so that we can share the different uh, research that have been carried out and even the success story next slide Dr. Lide, um, Dr. Lide, now you have to complete your presentation. Please. Okay, I think I can share the slide for the other uh, the other inputs that I have collected. Thank you. Thanks, thanks a lot. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry that I had to cut <laughs> you know, because you have to understand this because of time. Yeah, and yeah, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> we all have seen how informative this piece of information uh, that came from you, and. Uh, we can see that both your presentation right. and uh, the class presentation are complementary and they have a lot of agreements in between them. And also it's good to see that, you know, uh, uh, Meghalaya government is taking uh, uh, this entire uh, climate issue so seriously. It is collaborating with uh, the Gandhinagar IISC. And also, you know, we must appreciate government of Meghalaya for being one of the very few states in uh, the entire country who has a very good water policy in place and they have yeah, yeah. so you know Bengala is definitely you know we must say it's, it's becoming a progressive state as far as you know these issues are concerned thank you very much for giving us a glimpse to what the government is doing thank you dr Pasa. yeah thank you very much uh, ladies and gentlemen our uh, you know let me let me see how we can, i can uh, i have answered no so, okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, our last speaker of this session in Dr. M. Mukleshu Rahman. And uh, for those in Bangladesh, I mean, Dr. Mukleshu Rahman is a very, very well-known name. Uh, uh, he is a very renowned expert in the field of uh, natural resource management, especially when it comes to wetlands, fisheries. He is known for his diverse range of research and field-based interventions in ecosystem-based adaptation, nature-based solution, and especially in wetland conservation and sustainable management. At present, he is uh, acting as the executive director in the Center for Natural Resources Studies, which is called CNRS, is based in Dhaka. So Dr. Uh, Mukleshur uh, will deliver a presentation on the ecosystem-based adaptation to climate change in the Howard Basin in Bangladesh. In one of our earlier presentation, we got a glimpse of, we got to know what a Howard means. Now Mukesh will take us into the <coughs> ecosystem uh, uh, aspect of the Howards and also tell us how uh, through ecosystem-based adaptation, we can create resilient communities in the Howard areas. Uh, so it's all up to uh, Mukesh Rahman. Um, thank you, Patuda. Um, well, I mean, uh, my previous panelists, expert panelists, uh, uh, talked much about the climate change, uh, its impacts, and climate-related drivers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And now I'd like to uh, 
uh, showcase a kind of uh, our ecosystem based adaptation activities it's largely uh, focusing on addressing the climate related vulnerabilities as well as uh, other non climatic factors affecting the wetland ecosystems and its productivity can you please put can you please put in the slide mode presentation mode it will be uh, it will oh. be easier for us to see yeah yeah is that right yeah, yeah that's yeah. fine well, I mean, uh, overall, I think um, in Bangladesh, as well as other countries in the GBM, have similar types of problems of uh, ecosystem degradations, whether it is wetlands, forest, or coastal zone, or hill slopes. Um, in the wetland system, we have lots of drivers, uh, both climate and non-climate in nature, and affecting the fisheries production, the species diversity, catch per unit of effort, and uh, lots of uh, species are uh, now um, threatened at different categories. So this is the overall Bangladesh scenario, and I guess it is common in other countries as well. Um, uh, but if you look at the Heil Haur, it's a very unique uh, wetland uh, surrounded by hills, part of which is which, uh, within Bangladesh and then a part uh, in India. Um, it is unique in the sense that um, lots of varieties of species we get here. But in the past, this wetland was connected to Mono River and then uh, fish, different riverine fish used to migrate and colonize this habitat. But uh, many years back, the Water Development Board um, constructed a closer and that actually uh, impacted on migration. However, um, still uh, Heil Howard is important both in terms of fish and its aquatic vegetations is just fodder and uh, food, and also uh, it's uh, migratory birds. It is in the definitely within the Magna Basin, and uh, it shrinks to 3,500 in the dry season, but expanded to more than 12,000 hectares in the monsoon. But, you know, there are lots of drivers as well here, um, uh, from climate and non-climate related uh, factors. There are many, you know, uh, the impact pathways are there, but I just want to say that uh, increased drought and temperature, erratic rainfall, uh, dry and monsoon, and intense heavy rainfall, these are actually climate-related attributes <clears throat> that affect the our ecosystems, uh, but leasing systems and degradation, encroachment, conversion, what uh, Dr. Uh, Ali Azahar mentioned and showed a slide, uh, that's uh, the high how that how uh, the house system is being encrossed by the aquaculture system and affecting the captured fisheries and wetland biodiversity and the wetland ecosystem as well. Um, so we, uh, this is a project funded by the USAID called March and implemented during uh, late 1999 to 2006 7 And we had a, a participatory planning session with the villagers living around and <coughs> we, uh, based on the problems I mentioned earlier that are taken from uh, the uh, consultation process, and we uh, devised some or designed some interventions, uh, which are uh, all uh, biophysical interventions like habitat restoration, establishing wetland sanctuaries, and the introduction of locally lost species, and watershed restoration. Um, Alternative. These are all kind of uh, biophysical interventions, and uh, all these are nature-based approaches. And we also have the alternative income generation support to communities, building awareness and their capacity building, and also form the CBOs uh, to adopt some flexible norms of uh, harvesting and managing of the high power resources. So, and nature-based solutions, we all know that, you know, this is a kind of fixing the nature to fix the societal problems. And it addresses wide array of uh, societal challenges that we face nowadays and in the past as well. Um, so the one of the intervention was habitat restoration. So wetlands are silted up. Sedimentation is a big problem now <coughs> because of unsustainable land use and clearing of forests in the watershed. Yeah. This is what that uh, the communities ranked as high because uh, the sedimentation, reducing the carrying capacity, raising the wetland beds, 
and many uh, perennial wetlands now become seasonal. So uh, the fish are fished out. So there is hardly any in many of the wetlands uh, within the house system, high house system are dried up. So um, there is hardly any parent stock for next year's uh, spawning, the natural spawning and recolonization. So we excavated uh, around 30 wetlands of different sizes to, uh, to transform them from seasonal to perennial and maintaining uh, water in the dry season so that the fish and other aquatic biota can take shelter and they can grow there, stay there, which is called overwintering ground. And they can breed with, at the onset of the next monsoon, early monsoon. So this is what, you know, I think uh, very uh, important activity, natural reserve activity, and it has the direct uh, results we can measure in the next year as well. Establishing sanctuary is also very important because, you know, Bangladesh is overpopulated country and uh, historically people in the rural setting have, have higher reliance on captured fishing. And the, now the number of fishers increased and there is the pressure is also increased. Um, so, it is very difficult to maintain the fish biodiversity and production system unless we can keep some parent stock and the uh, repository for the biodiversity or, or the fisheries diversity. So um, in consensus with the communities and also the Ministry of Land, <coughs> one wetland over 100 hectares uh, was set aside as a permanent sanctuary. It's called the Bakkaville Sanctuary. Um, some of, I think you guys also visited the place and it is now a very good place for ecotourism as well. And the bird watchers, they go there and see birds and it's kind of a uh, good cultural site as well. So this is uh, the, the other uh, NBS intervention to adapt to the uh, climate and non-climate related problems. The introduction of locally lost and rare species. You see the swamp trees, this tree is called hijol. Uh, it is uh, a Barringtonia acutangula species. And if these this trees goes under water in the monsoon, usually they go and then they can survive. So, uh, and it's a very good habitat for fisheries and also wildlife birds and uh, other animals as well. And this also very good for uh, as a disaster reduction uh, activity because it reduces the strength of the webs and can save the villages in the Howard, uh, which are highly exposed to wave erosion in the monsoon. So we planted lots of uh, swamp trees, two species, uh, along the edge of the wetlands uh, for multiple purposes. And also we uh, reintroduced several species of fish uh, that are not present in the high Howard, but present in the other areas in the, uh, in the Howard Basin. And we have found that these species, we fish species we reintroduced, they, they have recolonized the area. We get uh, in the catch monitoring, we get there uh, uh, in the caches. And we also saw that um, some of these, I mean, the small, tiny fish, meaning they are breeding here. So this is, uh, uh, this, is this reintroduction of species actually uh, help uh, improving the food chain, food wave, meaning the uh, components of the ecosystem, structure and functions of the ecosystems. <clears throat> the other uh, important intervention was watershed management. It was not included in the original mass project proposal, uh, but later the community said that, well, if we remain only with the water and fish and other uh, wildlife, uh, that will not work uh, because the hill slope farming is very unsustainable. And uh, in the past, when it was rain in the morning, uh, we used to get the water coming in the hill in the afternoon or evening. But now within half an hour, we get the water come in with huge amount of sedimentation, sediments of sails or sands. So um, we did the riparian uh, vegetation development on the left side, you can see the photos. And in the right side, uh, we uh, work with the uh, hill slope farmers. They used to do a uh, vertical farming system, but with them, we demonstrated horizontal uh, pineapple farming to arrest the soil in the uh, uphills. Apart from those uh, biophysical thing, we also formed the community groups. We call this resource management groups. And <coughs> they also adopted um, several uh, conservation norms and rules that support the NBS. 
um, like periodical closing of fishing during, particularly during breeding season, um, stop catching of fish fry. This is an age old practice of catching these snakehead fish. They, they move in groups or shoals, and it is very easy to catch them. Uh, but <laughs> that's bad for the ecosystem and the biodiversity. Uh, so that was possible to largely stop that practice. Another thing is destructive use of destructive gears. Uh, we the communities have a kind of uh, social guarding uh, to stop that with the help of the uh, local administration. And dewatering of wetlands is also very threatening. That was reduced and uh, emphasized on uh, uh, implementation of Fish Conservation Act. And uh, we formed the groups provided awareness training, uh, credit, for local conflict resolution, and institutionally we link them with uh, local government, uh, sub-district government and district authorities so that uh, after the project they can uh, themselves uh, make, maintain contacts with the important actors in the area. <coughs> in terms of results, I mean, this is, um, uh, yeah, the fish catch uh, yield, uh, the increased and the fish consumption per capita also we increased. We involved the local um, kind of uh, school teachers and uh, educated men and women. We trained them to um, to do the catch monitoring, fish catch monitoring and household fish consumptions. And we also uh, found that the uh, income uh, of the beneficiaries increased due to taking up various alternative uh, income generation activities. And uh, uh, about 5,000 uh, fisher households, they reduced uh, their fishing days in the wetlands. And because of the Bakkaville Wetland Sanctuary, the lots of uh, migratory and uh, resident species, there is increase in there and it is consistently uh, ongoing. This is another, not the Hail Haur, uh, it is the, uh, in the greater Shunamgans wetlands, more close to the Meghalaya. Uh, you see the swamp forest, uh, this is the uh, Barringtonia species or Hizol species. Uh, they look like mangroves. Uh, we call it freshwater mangroves. Australian also say they call it uh, uh, freshwater mangroves. So in the bottom, you can see at the left there, there also we did the habitat restoration wetlands and also planted reeds <coughs> to um, improve the or enhance the habitat, uh, uh, habitat quality and quantity because there are many species they love the reedlands, and then the swamp species. So the the third photo at the bottom line, which is planted by us under the same project, is, is is also very good. And then then we water chestnut. Uh, uh, locally, it is called uh, shingara, and the water chestnut in some of the wetlands, uh, this water chestnut is gone, but we collected from other wetlands and replanted there. And crop diversification. You can see the women harvesting potatoes but we demonstrated um, over two dozens of different uh, winter crops in the Howard area because the rice, the, uh, the winter rice is highly susceptible to flooding because they take longer time. But alternatively crops, they are short duration, cash crops and cost effective. I mean, the income rate is very high compared to its investment and compared to rice production. And also supported uh, the um, households with, you know, dakari or dak rearing particularly in the dry season. Um, we also had other uh, support like, you know, protection of home streets from oil erosion uh, and also definitely awareness building and other stuff. So uh, the swamp forest uh, in, the, in the Howard Basin, when we had the discussion with the communities, I mean, they uh, said that there are a wide area of benefits they get out of the swamp forests. Uh, the natural swamp forest. We plant it, but it, it takes longer time to uh, take a shape of the natural. Bed. So it is not that only tree, but you know it is the ecosystem and, and provide multiple ecosystem services. So it is a kind of mix of wetlands and forest ecosystem. Our is not that simply water, but it's also uh, the trees, forest, and uh, wide area of biodiversity. Uh, this is these are the example also ecosystem based uh, I should say adaptation. Um, it's in Molubi Bazar, which is also close to Monu and uh, Kushiara. Um, there uh, we work in seven sub districts under Molubi Bazar, seven or six, yeah. And then uh, some places they are susceptible to flooding, and uh, household they incur losses due to 
uh, untimely or erratic rainfall and flooding, etc. So based on the uh, analysis of the problems due to climate change and uh, communities' capacity and interests, uh, like you know the fish ponds, um, actually under the nutrition program, our main focus is um, agriculture and uh, aquaculture and also uh, poultry and uh, livestock. So uh, to protect their fish from flooding, they put fences. And <clears throat> for agriculture, there are you know the raised based and improved drainage system, so that when there is torrential rains or intense heavy rains, the the extra water can be drained out quickly. And if the uh, I request uh, to the uh, size now. Yeah, close this. Yeah, I mean my time is over. Okay. <laughs> there is a garden, a vertical garden, and a wide array of uh, systems that we adopted. And uh, if you see the uh, NBS lens, then um, we see that the nature-based solutions or ecosystem-based approaches actually address the biodiversity decline and uh, declining fish yield. What is provide water security, food nutrition, uh, habitat protection, and DRR livelihoods, and all these things. Uh, I don't want to say this, but I want to say that ecosystem-based adaptations not only build the resilience of the society, but also the ecosystems. The ecosystem is, is hard, so it helps healing the ecosystem, increasing its productive potential. It, it means increase its you know, capacity to deliver ecosystem services. And this is the social resilience. The societies also get aware and empowered and educated uh, and also take control over the management of the ecosystems. So uh, socioeconomically and knowledge-wise, they are also empowered. So in conclusion, uh, the EBA or NBS are uh, adaptive and low-cost, uh, green and uh, lasting solutions. Um, uh, it has multiple effects. So one, uh, like habitat restoration, it, it, it's a water reservoir, it provides fish, and it, uh, it also helps irrigation. Um, so it is a kind of uh, healthy uh, touches or maintaining the relationship nexus between uh, water, food, biodiversity, health, and climate change. Um, so um, I just can move on to the next one. Oh, so I think that is basically what I want to say. Uh, the EBA also touches or help achieving various SDCs, relevant SDCs. Other important thing is transboundary. Megna Basin must need transboundary approach without the collaboration of the relevant Indian states and Bangladesh, our, our adaptation will not sustain. So that's very important. So that's what I want to conclude here. Thank you very much. Many, many thanks, uh, uh, Dr. Mukhlesh. I mean, uh, I think uh, Many of us who actually know you and your work were waiting eagerly, at least I was waiting eagerly for your presentation to talk about uh, and to introduce to the audience the whole idea of EBA, ecosystem-based uh, adaptation. And that's what you have done precisely and more effectively because you have uh, uh, explained uh, uh, the entire procedure of the very scientific interventions that you were doing through uh, the description of a life project that you were involved. And uh, 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 participants, if you may have already noted that in the chat box, uh, Mr. Viswaranjan Sina has already uh, given a link to a report, which is a very important report. Uh, those of you who are interested in knowing more about nature-based solution, please download the report and read it. Whatever examples uh, have been you know, uh, mentioned by Dr. Moklesh about the hail howl, you will find uh, everything in uh, much more detail. So thank you very much uh, to uh, Dr. Uh, Mukleshu Rahman. And uh, uh, we have come to the presentation part of this webinar, uh, but you have seen that we have already exceeded our uh, scheduled time. So can I request uh, the host and the organizers in Ayushin to give us an extension of at least 10 minutes because we have some interesting questions and uh, we can definitely indulge in a uh, very uh, uh, interesting dialogue uh, if, if that is possible. And uh, I have three uh, important questions at my hand, uh, but first of all, uh, I would like to, uh, I would like to uh, give one question to uh, 
Dr. Uh, Lin Ray. This question has come from Mr. Pranab Goswami. And his, uh, what he is asking is that, uh, uh, he is asking, uh, uh, do you think unregulated and Ill illegal uh, mining and logging uh, is one of is 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 one of the major factors uh, for the change in climate scenarios in Meghalaya. How it should be addressed in local as well as policy level, in your perspective, please. This is a question to Dr. Linre. Dr. Linre, can you please respond? Dr. Linre, you are there. Okay, somehow we are not having her with us. So can I uh, direct the next question, uh, which has come from Dr. Hilol Jyoti Shingha uh, to uh, Mukleshu Rahman. And uh, uh, he has asked, did you study the effects of migratory birds, especially the ducks and the waders after the plantation of swamp trees along, along the bank? Because usually ducks need open space just on the bank where they graze. Can I add one thing before Moklesh I can answer? Because yes. Just a couple of things which I felt I need to clarify is uh, first is that nature-based solution is very broad, but this was ecosystem-based adaptation is a bit specific. It is specifically related to those things uh, which help you adapt to climate change. So I mean, uh, of course, it's uh, NBS and e EBA is a part of NBS. And as a part of the whole understanding of NPS, I mean, IUCN has also developed a global standard. And one of the reasons for uh, that was to understand that anything is not said as NBS. So, so the thing is, uh, it is a very important question that uh, uh, has been put to you, Moklesh Bhai, that, okay, we plant trees, but then there was a habitat for, for a duck, which is different. So are we changing the habitat by by planting trees or how what should be the how we why I mean how we can be more careful in ensuring that we are not changing the character of the space? Okay, right. thank you. Very well put I, Please, please. Yeah, please. yeah. Uh, I think the uh, the plantation, the uh, actually how what was how in the past? Um it was a uh, forested wetland and in the Howard we have the rhinos as well but uh, we Bangladeshi are bigger rhinos so we actually uh, remove them from our part to Assam and so it means that the Howard was I mean uh, largely covered with swamp forest and reedlands and that's why we had the paper mill in the Howard area uh, to use uh, reeds as the raw materials but now uh, it is largely the agricultural land at some fellow areas. So the swamp trees are actually the in the past the characteristics or feature of the uh, Howard system. And uh, in the high Howard, basically it is 12,500 hectares or so. So what we planted, uh, the, we planted swamp trees just near to the Bakkaville sanctuary and the area should be less than 5% compared to the total system. And uh, bird monitoring was done by Dr. Paul Thompson and the renowned Bangladeshi. He's a British guy and very famous in bird watching. And he was also part involved in the mass project implementation and uh, national uh, birders. So the bird that I will look at, there is increase in number of resident and migratory birds. So what happened that in the, in the, uh, the swamp trees at the edges, we fix some nets and these uh, uh, wooden boxes are used by uh, what is called a, a resident bar, resident duck, uh, whistling teal or something. Uh, I, I'm not very, uh, I'm not a bad expert. And they use this nest for, for laying eggs and, and uh, increasing in their numbers. So um, uh, planting uh, swamp trees in the house is basically restoring its previous situation. Uh, and the, so, so that's the that's my question. And when I first went to the Howard many years back, then the people said, "Jungle nai, mas nai." I was really uh, a bit confused. I said, "What? What do you mean? 
because when we had projects and uh, studies in Tangal and Cholonbil area, they say Pani Nai Mas Nai. And now you are saying Jongol Nai Mas Nai. What does it mean? Then they explain that the uh, swamp forest, when they go under water, is, is a habitat. And uh, fish, many fish, they have sticky eggs and they need substrate for really spawning. And many small species need refuse area to escape from the, uh, the carnivores, the boal and other big species. <coughs> so basically, uh, planting uh, mangrove, uh, planting uh, swamp trees, freshwater swamp, is not actually creating a new habitat, rather restoring the old, very old habitat. So that was basically the understanding. And we have found, and you know, in the Tangwar Haur, more than one lakh, 100,000 uh, hijol and koros trees planted by the leaseholder. And that was, you know, it was done by probably 25 years or so, back or so. <coughs> So they know if we have the swamp forest, then we have more fish. Yeah. And EBA, well, I understand NBS is the umbrella term and there are lots of uh, ecosystem restoration, ecosystem-based adaptation. Uh, and there are many other things that uh, qualify as um, NBS, but definitely uh, I guess uh, this will uh, in line, uh, this is in line of the uh, IUCN's uh, global standard on NPS. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Doctor. Uh, thank you, Doctor Nicholas. That was, you know, a very elaborative uh, thing, and 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 definitely we all know that both nature-based solutions and as a subset ecosystem-based adaptation are new ideas for many people. I think as we go on uh, uh, to explore more and then to promote more these ideas as very safe and eco-friendly ways for. Uh, uh, adapting to some uh, impact of climate change, we learn more and more. Now, uh, uh, I can see that Dr. Lindre has uh, responded in writing to the question. And would you still uh, like to respond verbally, Lindre? You know the question. Hello, yes, Dr. Sir, I have responded. Please, 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 very quickly. Yeah, I have responded in her. That's fine, chat. but I'm asking, would you still like to say something verbally? Oh, okay. Uh, like I have told her that uh, mining sector is usually a climate induced uh, sector, uh, which can be hamper more with the climate variability. And the other options like to address this uh, mining uh, problem in the sector is that we can do a sustainable mine closure. And then we can have a green buffer zone where we can have more reforestation, especially in those mine spoil and abandoned mine. And even I think we should, uh, I think it's a very high time for the government of Meghalaya that we will have a mining policy in place, which will try to regulate for sustainable uh, mining. That's all. Okay. Uh, I think uh, my next query is based on a very interesting uh, kind of conversation I just saw in the chat box, which was initiated uh, by Vishwaranjan responded to by Dr. Mukhlesh in connection with uh, the presentation of Dr. Nath. And it's about whether we should uh, consider the old Brahmaputra river channel as part of the Meghna Vishnu or not. I mean, uh, uh, could you, could three of us, you know, again indulge in a verbal conversation just to enlighten, because this is a very important question because it, you know, on the Western mm -hmm. base, that is fine, uh, Parthada, but we can continue. But I think we do quickly need this thing and we need to close now because our tech support is also uh, waiting. So, uh, and we are already 26 minutes, I think, overboard. This is the last question. Give me, give me two, three minutes. Yeah, please. I mean, people, Dr. Nath, like, people have to also leave. Yeah, Dr. Nath. Yes, there? yes. Yeah, 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 I'm here. I'm happy have you seen that uh, seen that question in the chat box? The old channel of Brahmaputra. Uh, basically, Dr. Nath, I just want to tell you, like we we were trying to characterize Meghna Basin, and initially we were sharing and uh, using the map, which is generally uh, like we see like online or or the stats, which is given by uh, the government or JRC about eighty five thousand square kilometer area. But when we were actually doing it okay. and having consultation and on-ground truthing 
Um, so, so in our, our earlier reports, the full map is there, but now the analysis that we have done with CEGIS and Northeastern University, uh, it's almost 66,000 square kilometer. And uh, at a Meghna advisory meeting, it was discussed that uh, part of the old Brahmaputra, which is located you know, on the Western side, Northwest of the basin is not uh, actually um, in, in, I mean, you cannot, I mean, you shouldn't be considering that as a part of Meghna because it is coming from Brahmaputra. So when you cut that, then also you the Feni and other rivers are not part of Meghna. So basically, you have yesterday we had Dr. Fida, Hussain, Fida from the CEGIS of Bangladesh. He's the executive director and mentioned also that now with the map that we see, which is technically more correct based on the definition of a basin of area flowing into the common terminus, the new map has only 25 transboundary river basins. Okay. And not so now the yeah now as per the new new map the total area is around sixty six thousand uh, I mean sixty six thousand yeah that's what now we are using we are not including okay. the old Brahmaputra so as because you are also somebody you working with GIS so I wanted to ask you what is your view on that do you think that it is right or <laughs> you consider that as a part of me a bit controversial question. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, I mean, the the revised one, uh, maybe, I mean, we will need more discussion on this before we come to a conclusion. And okay. so I will stay neutral right at this moment on this. Okay, thank okay, you. Great. Dr. Nath as well as uh, uh, Mr. Rajat. I mean, it's not unusual because we have seen that uh, uh, the Chinese Academy of Science is also trying to redraw the whole uh, map of Brahmaputra Basin. So there's new interpretation. This is uh, probably is a more dynamic you know, uh, notion, redrawing and redefining basin, uh, the river basin. Yeah, I think I think let's let's not get into Moklesh by his question. Let's yeah. do it. We have we've just finished in one minute. Yeah, it's yeah. All... So see, uh, uh, I don't have any conclusions to make. Uh, Moklesh Bhai has a raised uh, hand. Do you want to say something, Moklesh Bhai? I wanted to cut short, Bisho. You were in a hurry to close. Uh, no, no, no. I didn't raise hand. Somebody did it. I think. Okay, or okay. maybe by default, by default it, it's like this. <laughs> so, Shamsher Bhai had some question for Moklesh Bhai, which you already asked. No. Uh, after the closing the meeting. Okay. okay. After closing so, the meeting, personal question. Okay. Would okay, you, so thank you very much. Uh, back to Barthada, you can close. You allow me to close now? Thank you. So uh, uh, I don't have anything to conclude because it. I, I, I would like to leave it open because we uh, 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 actually, we are after this whole uh, you know, presentations, we have so much of you know, uh, new information and, and because that's what we were soliciting from. And we need to come into terms uh, with this new information and insight to come to conclusions. So I can only give my heartfelt thanks to many people, mainly Ayushian, uh, for organizing and for uh, the whole thing for making Aranyak and me and uh, uh, and both Nadi Mancha, Nadi Adhikar Mancha and Shamsher uh, to co-organize this special session. And our you know sincere thanks to all the panelists, all the all the speakers and to all uh, uh, respected participants for being a part of this. Uh, uh, we uh, had a couple of other things to discuss, but as we know, time comes in uh, as the most crucial factor. So I think from our side, uh, uh, thank you very much. And it's all over to Vishwaranjan and Ayushan. Thank you very much. So thank you all the speakers for coming. Lerna, Dr. Nath, Shamsher Bhai for organizing. Moklesh Bhai, good to see you after a really long time. And I'm really happy, Dr. Azhar and uh, Khalid Bhai for taking notes. He's like silent, but he's listening to you. And uh, that's it. I think what I want to say as a closing point is that it's the start of a new discussion on Meghna about how climate change data and impacts are being used what we don't understand. So today we have understood that, okay, what kind of information is already there and what is it that we need to do to have a better understanding of the basin. So thank you very much, all. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.